This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello friends. Today we'll discuss something about managing a calcified capsule and also learn a little bit about the basics of vertical chop. This is an elderly 75 year old lady who has this hypermature cataract with calcified capsule and let's see how things go. We have got multiple challenges to deal with. First we are going to deal with the rexus because it's quite difficult to get the rexus in these calcified capsules. Uh, luckily this is just occupying the central portion. The peripheral extension is not much. So if we can work around this area of calcification, we should be able to successfully create a good rexis. And let's see what strategies I follow. The capsule is stained and OVD is placed into the eye. The globe is stabilized using a second instrument. And I'm going in with my 26 number bent needle. I'm puncturing the capsule just adjacent to the area of the capsule. Now I'm trying to make a flap and try to tear around when I go and hit this area of resistance. I quickly switch on to my forceps. And luckily for me when I try to peel it just comes out. Again I hit an area of resistance. I don't persist much here. So I end up having a very small rexus with couple of ragged edges. Now I change the angle of attack and I'm trying to go in from the other end. As soon as I get an area around the calcific plaque, it's easier for me to tear the normal capsule and complete the rexus. Again uh, during completion I hit this band here. Uh, but luckily it didn't cause me much problem. So the message is whenever we have a, a central plaque, it's much more easier to deal with this. We need to work around this capsule. So we need to try to avoid this plaque areas. And as soon as we are out of this range, the healthy capsule is extremely easy to tear. So we have a decent sized capsular opening now, which is circular. So let's move into emulsifying the nucleus. As is my typical strategy, which you must have all noted in my previous videos. I make a small central groove, which could be around 50% in this patient using continuous torsional energy. The idea is I would want to bury my phaco tip as deep as is possible. Since the phaco tips of the Alcon machines are extremely thin, we don't get enough purchase to bury in. So it's important that we hold the nucleus in its central core and as deep as possible. That's the trick to get the perfect grip. So when I'm going for my chop settings, the power is changed to longitudinal and it's in burst mode. Now I know that the depth of the tip is quite adequate and I give a short burst of phaco energy to bury my tip. I want to bury it as deep as I can. The entire tip up to the sleeve needs to be buried so that I have a decent purchase which gives me a very firm grip on the nucleus. And then the sharp chopper just goes down and then make a lateral movement. So we get a first crack here. Another point to note here is that the chopper is never going to touch the rexus margin. I'm very conscious about this because the rexus is also not very large and hence I'm not very aggressive in lateral separation movements. Instead I would like to place the chopper deep inside and then separate. So that helps me to minimize any stress on these already weak capsules. These are all long-standing cataracts and the capsules are not going to be very healthy. The tip is again buried deep until the sleeve is reached and then the chopper goes down a couple of times until we see a through and through crack. 
The nucleus is not so hard, it, although the color is brown, it's relatively brittle and not very difficult to break the posterior plate. So the dividing the nucleus into smaller pieces is not much of a big deal, but I just wanted you to uh, learn the you know finer nuances of you know how to bury the phaco tip deep into it. The critical factor is that we need to have a firm grip, and that is the only secret to get a good vertical chop. For that, we need to whatever tip you are using, ensure that the grip is firm. The Alcon tips are extremely thin, and the surface area is very small, unlike the bulbous and the flared tips of some other companies. There are two important things here. We need to bury a little bit longer, especially in a denser nucleus, and we need to bury it in a deeper plane. These two points ensure that we get a very firm grip and consequently the chopping becomes quite easy. Moving on to the quadrant removal. Please note that the quadrant is not pulled out of the bag as it is being emulsified. Some part of the nucleus is still rotating under the anti-capsule within the bag. The piece is brushing against the anti-capsule as it is being consumed. This suggests that the plane of emulsification is not anterior and ideally this is the plane of emulsification we should aim in most cases. Now apart from the plane of emulsification, the amount of lens chatter and the turbulence which we have during surgery are important factors which are responsible for endothelial damage during phaco emulsification. It is not just the phaco power alone. Ideally the fragment should not leave the tip once it is engaged. It should just dance around it until it just vanishes. The secret to minimize the endothelial trauma uh, is how we modulate the energy delivery so that there is very minimal amount of lens chatter and turbulence. I believe that mechanical trauma by the flying tiny fragments is more responsible for the endothelial damage than the amount of ultrasonic energy used. With a proper strategy we can have crystal clear corneas in the first post-op day even in denser cataracts. Time to remove the cortex. It's customary for me to just blow the posterior capsule to loosen up some of the fibers which could be sticking around before I start uh, aspiration the cortex. I can see a tiny fragment which was just hiding near the side port. It is expressed out. Cortex aspiration is performed by bimanual irrigation aspiration cannula. Intraocular lens is introduced using the irrigation only method that's hydro implantation. The irrigating handpiece is held above the IOL as it gently unfolds into the bag. The trailing haptic is then dialed in. That's it, the case is done. So to summarize, a few key messages from this video. Number one, uh, in the presence of a central plaque of a calcified capsule, which is not extending peripherally, rexus can still be performed with relative ease as long as you're working around it and we need to remember that the tear can become uncontrolled if we involve the calcific area. However, if the calcification is extending peripherally, then it's quite difficult and then there's a different technique which will be demonstrated in some of my later videos. Moving on to the direct chop technique, few fundamental principles need to be understood here. Uh, the secret to achieve any chop is to have a firm grip on the nucleus and this is easy if we have a wider bore tip which has a larger surface area to bury into the nucleus and then subsequently the hole will be very good. On the contrary, in tips which are very thin and the surface area is small, then the holdability might not be great and very often during the chopping maneuvers we can see the torque force is introduced resulting in rotation of the nucleus and hence an inefficient division process. So in harder cataracts and if you are having thinner tips as in this case, the key is to bury the tip deeper as much as possible that is until we reach the sleeve. 
to get into the core of the nucleus. This ensures better grip and hence makes the chopping relatively easier. Second important point, when we are laterally separating, we need to be mindful that the chopper or the second instrument is not stretching or tugging at the rexus margin. The rexus can get torn during aggressive lateral separation maneuvers. So the trick here is to place the second instrument deeper, that is more posteriorly, so that very less force is required to separate or divide the fragments. Just placing the second instrument near the posterior plate makes the entire division process very efficient and less stressful on the capsular bag, zonules and also on the rexus margin. And that's it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.